All right, we are live. So hello everyone. And um, so uh, today this is our last community talk. And um, so we have Lubomir today together with us. So he's going to talk about a random force algorithm as an inference test for survival cares comparison. Uh, stage is yours, Lubomir. And a quick reminder for the audience so you can drop your questions to YouTube chat. And stage is yours, Lubomir. Okay, thank you for a nice invitation. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I've got this amazing opportunity to, to tell you something about uh, our research. My name is uh, Lubomir Stepanek, and I come from the first Faculty of Medicine, Charles Liberty in Prague, and from Faculty of Informatics and Statistics, University of Economics in Prague. So our team and me, we are just interested in a survival analysis and its applications, and this is what I'm going to talk about. And it's a big pleasure for me that this is just a joint work with Filipa Barta, Ivana Ma, and uh, Lubos Marek. So let's have a look. I need the outline of my talk. So I'll start with a quick introduction where I'm going to introduce some basic terms. Uh, then I'll continue with some new proposed assumption-free alternative uh, to the methods I'm going to talk about before, and which uh, which is usually based on a random forest modeling. And then I will briefly talk about the simulation study, describing a bit more some properties of the method we have developed. And finally, I will point out some key findings. So uh, a situation of comparing two uh, or more time uh, event survival curves is very common in applied biostatistics, and therefore several well-established methods can be used, uh, such as the Lagrange test for comparing two survival curves or the Cox proportional hazard model uh, for comparing more than two curves. But all the methods mentioned, uh, they are just easily available uh, in different software. However, each one of them uh, is usually limited by rigorous statistical assumptions. So in this study, we address the mentioned issue and propose a new statistical approach on how to compare two or more survival curves using a random force algorithm, which is particularly assumption free. So here we can see a typical survival plot with two survival curves, also called Kaplan-Meier plot using Kaplan-Meier estimator. I'm going to talk, mention a basic terms of survival analysis. The target variable in survival analysis is usually two-dimensional, covering both the time of the event and whether the event or, or the censoring has occurred. So intuit intuitively, such a variable suggests to be plotted uh, in this kind of two-dimensional chart, where usually a number of subjects not experiencing the event of interest to a number of all subjects uh, is plotted on a vertical axis at a given time point. And while the horizontal axis stands for the time uh, until the event, event of interest or until the sensoring. So the low ground test uh, checks the hypothesis that both groups have identical hazard or survival functions. So if their survival functions and survival curves are similar enough. Uh, the Logan test assumes that the censoring shouldn't affect the event of interest anyhow, and the proportion of censored data should be uh, near equal size in both the groups, otherwise the chi-square statistics different between the two groups. Also, uh, the initial total number of windows and the number of all the event times should be large enough, such that the chi-square statistics uh, should fulfill its asymptotic properties. Uh, the Cox uh, proportional hazard model is commonly used to model relationships between the hazard function of the event of interest and, and some uh, other explanatory variables. Also, uh, what is more important for us, Cox model is also used for comparing two or more soil curves using some watt t test. Cox proposed uh, to estimate the hazard function using uh, using the formula uh, as we can see here. Uh, if you write the formula for the Fox model, uh, such that the, we take the ratio of, the, of uh, two left hand sides and two right hand sides for two different groups marked by subspace one and two, we can see the hazard ratio for any two groups is supposed to be constant. This is uh, why Cox model is called proportional hazard. However, this assumption is often not met in real data analysis, uh, which I'm going to illustrate on the next two slides. So here in the plot, we can see two serial curves, and also we can see the curves cross each other. Definitely, the hazard function uh, couldn't be proportionally constant across all time points, since the hazard function for the solid line curve is larger than the uh, proportion of the dashed line curves to the crossing point, but it's switched vice versa after the crossing point. And similarly here, uh, the dashed line curve drops to zero, while the solid line curves uh, still levels off. So their hazard proportion uh, changed from a non-zero value to a zero value after the dropping of the dashed line curve. So let's move to decision trees. Uh, they are also called classification trees. Uh, they belong to the card family of trees. They are, these are just sets of rules. Uh, they partition the hyperspace of all uh, exploratory variables into disjunctive hyperrectangles and fit some simple, usually constant models there, each minimizing some given criterion. So the logic behind the tree induction uh, is described by the flowchart on the right. 
basically uh, for each node, the tree uh, in action tolerance searches for the best node decision rule. It means that the logical formula containing an exponential variable and its relation to some constant or some subset that minimize the going criterion, and, the, uh, and it should split the data set uh, into two subsets that are as different as possible. Uh, Tuning child's nodes for the corresponding two parts of the data sets are added to the growing tree, and the procedure is uh, for, for searching such a node rule is repeated until the data set is split optimally. Means that all the leaf nodes contain contain all, all only observations of uh, only one target class. So uh, let's say my J be a proportion of a target uh, a target uh, class J in all observations constrained by the rules coming from the root to the no uh, to the uh, entry node. Uh, obviously, this proportion uh, should be maximized for the class uh, that the leaf node classifies into. And the given criterion, which is minimized uh, in searching for node and rule, is called impurity measure. There are several commonly used uh, impurity measures, for example, misclassification error, Gini index, or deviance, also called, called uh, cross entropy. You can easily uh, see that the higher the sigma j as a proportion of target class uh, j in the node NT is, the lower impurity measure is as expected. So just to avoid uh, overfitting of a tree, or just uh, or to, just a composite of a tree, a procedure called pruning is applied. And the pruning needs to find a subtree that uh, minimizes the cost complexity function. So you can see in the first uh, formula, the cost complexity function depends besides that on a kappa parameter that governs the trade-off uh, between a tree complexity or size and goodness of fit to the data. So while the low values of kappa force to overfit uh, the tree, the largest value of uh, kappa tends to underfit it. So uh, once you generate uh, classification trees, as described about, uh, uh, before, construction of a random forest is relatively easy. Random forests are finite sets of decision trees so that uh, each uh, tree classifies uh, uh, classified observation depicted by a vector of values of k and exponential variables into one of the target classes. So the final classification into class is done using a voting scheme. Uh, the final class uh, is one of the largest subset and the random forest trees that classifies into it. So to ensure that the splitting variables are uncorrelated, the reduced number of variables is pre-selected by some bootstrapping. So let's move to the uh, proposed method. It's based uh, uh, on a random forest modeling. Intuitively, uh, the more trees uh, in a random forest are of sufficient complexity and able to classify into two or more classes. It means into two groups uh, of individuals described uh, by their survival curves. The more likely we can reject the null hypothesis that claims that there is no statistical difference between the serial curves or between the groups. On the left, we can uh, see an example of a tree with insufficient complexity. This one is not able to classify into more classes. The more complex tree classifying into two classes is uh, on the right. So before uh, the random forest uh, model is constructed, data needs to be transformed a bit. So vector properties uh, that an individual uh, form, uh, from group uh, I you know, experience the event of interest in the jth time point is the same for each observation in group I. To individualize these, to personalize these properties, we use delta and uh, new, uh, new J operator. This is equal to one. Uh, if an individual uh, new didn't experience the event of interest uh, in the time point J and equal, uh, is equal to zero otherwise. By this approach, uh, and vectors of k probabilities for each individual are personalized enough and enables uh, to construct a sufficient trees uh, and random forests. Finally, the data are transformed into a matrix of n rows and k columns. So the null hypothesis uh, claims that there is no statistical difference uh, between the survival curves, and the alternative hypothesis claims uh, the contradiction. So the p-value is the probability of collecting data at least as extreme as the data actually observed, and under the assumption of the null hypothesis, of course. So whether TC be a number of trees in the random forest that are in contradiction to the null hypothesis under the null hypothesis assumption, it means that the value of TC is equal to the number of all the trees classifying into more than only one class. In other words, it is a similar to the sense of p-value and to a priori in contradiction to the claiming of the null hypothesis. So now let's suppose that the tree tau classifies into NC tau classes then TC is a size of set of all trees classifying into at least two classes. So assuming uh, that all trees are inducted perfectly randomly and independently, regardless of their complexity, the p-value is uh, estimated by uh, as a probability of getting data at least as extreme as observed. So in other words, this is equivalent to a situation that the number of trees in contraction to null hypothesis is uh, TC or TC plus one or TC plus two or even larger. And by doing this arithmetic, we derive the p-value 
uh, if you go to the last fraction, as we can see it, uh, the T is a number of all Gs and there are no fourths. So intuitively, uh, if the number of Tc of Gs with, uh, uh, with sufficient complexity, which means that they are contrary to the hypothesis, and the random forest model is low, then the random forest model is in agreement with the new hypothesis and uh, what it's claiming. And there are no differences between the survival curves and also the fraction for the p-value is close to one. Choose the uh, p-values uh, very likely not below, uh, is likely not below the alpha level of 0 and 0 0.5, so the no hypothesis is very likely not rejected. And similarly, the opposite logic holds for the high values of Tc. So, uh, we already know that the kappa parameter determines the complexity. It means that the uh, size of trees in the random forest and pruning. If the kappa is zero, uh, then there is no cost for high tree uh, complexity, and uh, the trees in the random forest would be generally very complex. It means a large size. So all the trees would classify all observations in three groups, and these t terms will be equal to the t as the number of all the trees. So the p value estimates will be approximately zero. And if p value is about zero, then it's lower than alpha, uh, which is as a consequence results uh, in the rejection of the null hypothesis. On the other hand, if the kappa is larger than zero and the tree's complex size generally decreases and consequently not all of the trees are of sufficient complexity to classify into uh, more than one class. So the TC is lower than T and P value as a consequence is larger than zero and could be either above or below alpha level. So uh, finally, we have moved to simulation study. So uh, the proposed assumption of three method was compared to the Lagrange test by simulating pairs, random non-crossing curves that are not significantly different and calculating uh, the first type errors, which means that uh, when the equivalent curves are uh, detected as different. So we assume that the more robust method should uh, have less value of the first type error. So we generated many pairs of survival curves following a negatively exponential survival function as is defined below. And the simulation was uh, repeated for different kappa parameter values, just to illustrate how the value of kappa determines the first type error rates. So there were 1,000 pairs of significantly non different serial curves generated in total, and for each kappa equal to 0 at 1, 0 at 3, 0 at 5, 0 at 7, and 0 at 9, respectively, the curves were compared using the Lorgan test. And the test uh, uh, did the above proposed method. So uh, the number of trees in each random forest was always 1,000. Number of cases where the p-value was lower than or equal to alpha of 0, 0, 0.05, regardless of the method summed up, by which we got uh, the point estimates of the first type of rates as illustrated in the table, as we can see. While the Lorgan test returned a point estimate uh, of the first type of rate about 0, 0, 0.05, regardless of the kappa, since the chi square is for Lorgan is not a function of a kappa, the point estimate of the first type of rate uh, output by the interviews method progressively decreased with increasing value of kappa. So the proposed method seems to be more robust than the Lagrange test for larger values of kappa uh, based on the simulation. So just to conclude this, uh, we have seen that the survival curves uh, could be compared by the Lagrange test or by the Cox proportional hazard model. However, those, uh, those methods are limited by some statistical assumptions. And we introduced a novel assumption-free method for survival, survival curves comparison. And it is based on a random forest algorithm. We derived that the proportion of trees with sufficient complexity capable of classifying into two or more groups determined by their serial curves uh, is close to a point estimate of p-value. So the parameter kappa could determine the random forest tree's complexity. And by increasing the parameter, the average p-value returned by the method increases. But the first type error rate decreases as illustrated by the simulation study. So as an advantage uh, compared to the Logan test or Cox model, the random forest method is assumption free and it could compare more than two survival curves. And finally, the method is implemented in a new, newly prepared R, R package. So uh, thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, I can try to answer them. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lubomir. Uh, so if it was on time, thanks, thanks for the time management. Um, yeah, and thanks for also this great presentation uh, and a very valuable uh, work again uh, from you. Um, I'm just checking the chat, so I cannot see any questions. Um, yeah, thank you once again for being with us. Thank you for sharing your research studies. I think uh, if anybody wants to contact you, they can use those email addresses, right? Okay, thank you very much for uh, welcoming me in your, in your conference and I'm hoping to see you next year. 
let's say face to face. Hopefully face to face. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. So thanks again, and uh, so have a great uh, week. Uh, so just a reminder for uh, for the audience, and so we will have our closing session uh, starting at uh, five past eight p.m. Uh, Central European time. So see you there. Uh, so we will also announce the uh, result of our grants. So yeah, see you around there. And then thank you for your attention. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you.